Aloha, top of the morning, friends and family. As I mentioned in my last video, I was going to take the opportunity in this video to answer one of the toughest questions I've ever been asked, and probably one of the tougher questions that is asked over time, which is why does God allow evil in the world if there is a God? Why do bad things happen to good people? That 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 whole chestnut. I'm gonna dive into it here. All the videos I've watched on this subject are usually pretty long, like an hour or so, and I wanted to make an attempt at breaking it down to a 10 minute video and give five clear and concise explanations um, explaining why, why God allows evil in the world. For each explanation, we'll give both one example from scripture as well as one real world example. And the biblical examples will serve as illustrations of the philosophical ideas presented in each explanation and offer a spiritual perspective on why God allows certain events to unfold in the world. And by using real world examples, hopefully we can better understand how these philosophical ideas about why God allows evil in the world are reflected in everyday experiences. Explanation one, the nature of free will. One of the prevailing explanations is the concept of free will. According to this view, God gave humanity the gift of free will, allowing us to make choices, including the choice to do good or evil. This is one of the more mind-bending ideas, like how can God be completely sovereign over an entire universe while also allowing free will? It's a, it's a dimension of thinking that is beyond human comprehension, it seems. In the Bible, the story of Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis illustrates the concept of free will. God granted them the freedom to choose whether to obey or to disobey. And their decision to eat the forbidden fruit was a demonstration of free will and the consequences of that choice. For our real world example, we can see the concept of free will in action when individuals are given the choice to help or harm others. For instance, a person may choose to volunteer at a homeless shelter, which is an act of good, or commit a crime, an act of evil, based on their free will. Explanation two, we're going to keep it clipping along. In this explanation, the existence of evil is seen as a catalyst for moral growth. It's through facing and overcoming adversity we can develop virtues like compassion, empathy, and courage. The story of Joseph in the book of Genesis portrays moral growth through adversity. Joseph faced betrayal and adversity when his brother sold him into slavery. However, he ultimately became a wise and compassionate leader in Egypt, saving many lives during the famine. For our real world example, consider the story of Malala Yousafzai, who faced evil in the form of violence, discrimination against girls simply wanting an education but her experience led her to become an advocate for girls' education, demonstrating incredible courage and empathy as the result of the adversity she faced. Explanation number three, theodicy. Theodicy, the attempt to reconcile the existence of evil with an all-loving God, acknowledges that human understanding is limited, as we mentioned before. What may seem evil to us in the short term could have a greater purpose within the grand tapestry of existence. The book of Job is a prime example of theodicy. Job, a righteous man, faithful man, faced extreme suffering and tragedy, including the loss of his family and health. Throughout the story, Job questions why God allows such suffering, highlighting the complexity of understanding God's purpose. In the real world, we see natural disasters like hurricanes, earthquakes, tragic human events like 9-11, and they often bring devastation and suffering. However, these events can also foster solidarity and cooperation among communities, highlighting the potential for good to emerge from what initially appears as evil. Explanation four, lessons and tests. From a spiritual perspective, some believe that God allows evil as a way of testing and teaching humanity. The challenges we can face lead to personal growth, spiritual maturity, and the deepening of our faith. In the book of Genesis, I know we're using Genesis a lot, but it has a lot of good examples. God tested Abraham's faith by instructing him to sacrifice his son, Isaac. This challenging test demonstrated the idea that trials can lead to spiritual growth and a deepening of faith. 
Ultimately, God provided a ram for the sacrifice, sparing Isaac. In a real world example, I was looking at Nelson Mandela, 27 years in prison. It's a real world example of facing immense trials and tests that led ultimately to personal growth and resilience. During his time in prison, Mandela endured harsh conditions and isolation, yet he remained committed to his ideals of ending apartheid in South Africa. His imprisonment served as a profound test of his character and determination. It deepened his resolve, and upon his release, he became a global symbol of reconciliation and forgiveness. His experience stands as an inspiring testament to how adversity and tests can lead to remarkable personal growth, moral strength, and the transformation of an entire nation. All right, for our last explanation, explanation number five, the balance of the universe. This viewpoint suggests that the balance of good and evil is necessary for the universe to function at all. Just as light and darkness coexist, good and evil are part of the cosmic equilibrium. The story of Noah's Ark, yes, in Genesis again, reflects the concept of balance in the universe. God sent a great flood to cleanse the earth of wickedness while sparing Noah and his family, along with pairs of animals. And this event is seen as a restoration of balance in the world. In ecosystems, predators and prey coexist. Predators are often seen as agents of harm, but they help to maintain the balance of species and prevent overpopulation. And that balance is essential for the health of the entire ecosystem. Ultimately, understanding why God allows evil in the world is a deeply personal and philosophical journey. It requires reflection, contemplation, and an appreciation for the complexities of the human experience. I'd also like to note that while lots of folks claim to seek answers to this profound question, some who don't believe in God's existence might not genuinely be seeking an answer despite asking the question. So I encourage you to not be discouraged if someone like that tries to shut you down. Just just be patient. Just be patient with them. Whether you are on a spiritual quest for understanding or exploring these ideas from a philosophical perspective, the question of why God allows evil in the world will remain a timeless and intricate topic. I hope this video has provided you with valuable insights and perspectives as you continue your journey. We encourage you to consider the teachings of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which emphasize love, compassion, and the pursuit of goodness. And um, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. And y'all take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the next one. Aloha. Vladi Divac and the Irby Irby All Stars. Yeah, it's a good time. Vladi Divac and the Irby Irby All Stars. Vladi Divac and the Irby Irby All Stars. Vladi Divac and the Irby Irby All Stars. Coming to a town near you. <laughs> Complex topic, Jimmy. Complex topic. Difficult subject. Clear and concise explanations. That's what we're going to try and give.